Well, the one thing Kepler did not tell us was the absolute size of the solar system. He tells us the relative size. We could take the planet Mars, for example. We know its period is such and such. We plug it into Kepler's third law, and out we get the semi-major axis in astronomical units. We don't know how big an astronomical unit is. We just know it's the distance between the sun and the earth, but we don't know what that distance is in something meaningful, like meters or kilometers. So we can say that Mars's semi-major axis is 1.6 times that of Earth, um, Jupiter 5.2 times that of Earth, or whatever the numbers happen to be. We understand the relative scales and distances and spacings of the planets, but we don't know the scale absolutely. And to do that, we have to actually measure one astronomical unit, the Sun-Earth distance. So we're going to take an aside here and talk about two ways in which this was done. One, very early on, using parallax measurements of Venus, and one, a more modern day solution from the 20th century, where we actually send radio waves out there with the radio waves bounce off of Venus and come back and we measure time of flight. So again, Kepler gave us the relative size of the solar system. Now we're going to figure out the absolute size. And to do this, we must measure 1 AU. So let's take the case of Venus. It's the planet that gets closest to Earth. And here it's drawn in that configuration, configuration of closest approach. We have Venus's orbit, which is at 0.73 astronomical units. Again, we just figured that out by measuring its period. How long does it take to go around the sun? Stick it into Kepler's third law. Kepler's third law tells us it's at 0.73 astronomical units. Kepler's law tells us that we're at one astronomical unit by definition. And so, sometimes Venus is very far away from us, sometimes it's close. Here it is at closest approach, and at closest approach it's 1 AU minus 0.73 AU, so 0.27 AU. At different positions in its orbit, it would be different numbers of AU, but let's consider this configuration, because it's kind of the easiest to deal with mathematically. So if there's some way that we can measure the distance between Earth and Venus at closest approach, in actual units, something like meters or kilometers, then we can figure out how many meters or kilometers are in one astronomical unit, and then we know the actual absolute physical distance to everything else orbiting the sun, because we already know those distances in astronomical units. Okay, method one is parallax, and we'll get to work an example of a uh, parallax calculation now. So we, we looked at this figure before. Imagine that you have telescopes on opposite sides of the Earth, which Skynet has, for example, and we're looking at Venus. And we'll now suppose that that gray object, instead of being the supernova, the comet that we talked about before, or the moon as it's referred to in the textbook, we'll presume this is Venus. And if we look at Venus from one side of the Earth, it should appear around a certain set of stars, distant background stars. And if we look at Venus from the other side of the Earth simultaneously, it should appear around different stars. There should be a shift. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this figure on its side. So I'm going to rotate it uh, clockwise. And I'm going to go through this geometry. Now this is a geometry that we'll encounter over and over again in this course and in the lab. You can use this for many different things. Uh, you can use it to measure angular sizes of objects, in lab two that you're approaching, we'll use it to measure the uh, uh, size of the Earth, all sorts of things. So this is going to be a very familiar geometry, uh, particularly if you're in the lab course, you'll see it double. But here's the basic idea. What we have here on the left is Earth, and here are the two points of observation, one on one side of the planet, one on the other side of the planet. The distance between them, we call that the baseline, that's the distance between the observing points. A class ago, we did the experiment with the finger, where you put your finger in front of your face and close one eye, and then shift to the other eye. Your two eyes, the distance between your eyes is the baseline in that example, and you're looking at your finger, and that's the distant object. So, in this, we're measuring the distance to Venus, so the gray dot over here, consider that on Venus, nothing's to scale. If it was to scale, the angle would be very, very small, and it'd be hard to fit all the numbers and letters on here and the arrows. 
so it's not to scale. But imagine we're looking at Venus from two sides of the Earth. So if we're looking from the bottom part here in this figure, Venus would appear over in this part of the sky. They're background stars, and it would appear to be near them. If we're looking at Venus from here at the exact same time, it will appear to be in a different part of the sky. It will appear to be over here compared to the background stars. And we can measure that angular shift. And we're going to call that angular shift theta. And so let's, I'll write this down here. Theta is the angular shift as observed from one side of the baseline to the other. In this case, we're talking Earth baseline. And for Venus, it's about one arc minute, approximately one arc minute. And one arc minute is what fraction of a degree? 60th, yep, yeah, 160th of a degree. And if you remember, one arc minute is about as good as you can do without a telescope. So once you introduce the telescope, this is a very easy thing to measure. Stars, when you look at a picture and there's stars in the picture, the stars tend to be blurred out to scale of one arc second due to atmospheric blurring effects, the atmosphere shifting around and blurring our image. One arc second is a 60th of an arc minute. So an arc minute is like 60 stars across if you line them up side by side. It's a very easy thing to measure uh, once you have a telescope. So this was a very easy measurement, and that's the observable, but we want to turn this into a distance. Well, the concept is, imagine drawing a giant circle centered on Venus, a circle that intersects the Earth. Here it is going around, goes off the figure, comes back around, and back here. So you can think of this as uh, an angle as a fraction of 360, or a piece of the circumference of this big circle as a fraction of the whole circumference. You know, in, in any circle, you have 360 degrees. This angular shift is some fraction of a full 360 degrees, theta over 360. And that has to be the same fraction as this distance, the baseline, divided by the whole circumference, the big circle. Think of it as a giant pie, and you're taking a little sliver of pie. How much pie are you eating? You can measure it in angle. Some, that angle is some fraction of 360 degrees, that's the fraction of the pie that you took, or you can measure it out on the circumference of the pie, the crust. I, I took uh, two inches of crust, maybe there are 20 inches going around, I took one-tenth of pie. And those have to be the same number. Okay, so let's write it down. In fact, it's written up there, but also right on the dog cam. Uh, in fact, I'll do it on a new page, make some room for the computation. So the angular shift, which is what we measure, divided by 360, is going to be equal to the baseline of observation divided by the circumference of the giant circle. So what's the equation for circumference? Circumference of a circle is equal to 2 pi times the radius of the circle. 2 pi. Well, the radius of this giant circle centered on Venus intersecting the Earth is what? Physically, it is what we want. It's the distance to Venus. So the radius of the big circle is the distance, and that's what we want to know. How far away is Venus, in this case, at closest approach? Okay, well, let's uh, work it out here. We said that the angular shift is one arc minute, or one sixtieth of a degree. When doing this, often uh, angular shifts will be measured in arc minutes or arc seconds. When using this equation, you have to convert that to degrees. The units must cancel out. So keep that in mind when you're doing the homework. Whatever is given, like in one of them, I give you an angular shift in arc seconds. You've got to get it into degrees so the degrees cancel. The baseline is the um, diameter of the Earth. And it's about 1.3 times 10 to the 4 kilometers divided by 2 pi distance. And distance is what we want to know. Well, let's take this, you stick it into a calculator, and uh, you do that, you're going to get a very small number. 1 60th divided by 360 comes out to 4.6 times 10 to the minus 5, and there's no unit, it's dimensionless, the degrees have canceled out. And over here, if we divide 2 pi into this number, we get about 2.1 times 10 to the 3 kilometers divided by the distance between Earth and Venus at closest approach. Now, if you're, you know, farther away, you're going to get a different angular shift, and so this would be a different number as well. The closest approach, that's the angular shift, and so that's the distance closest approach. 
Now, to solve this, we need to solve for distance. So let's get distance by itself, and uh, I'll just go through the steps here. We're going to multiply both sides by distance, and divide both sides by this small number right here, 4.6 times 10 to the minus 5. 4.6 times 10 to the minus 5. And the reason we're doing this is these will cancel out, giving us a distance by itself. Now on this side, distance cancels out. All make sense so far? Just a little bit of algebra, practice in solving an equation. So we get distance is equal to 2.1 times 10 to the 3 kilometers divided by 4.6 times 10 to the minus 5. You plug that into a calculator and you get about 4.5 times 10 to the 7 kilometers. So that's the distance to Venus at closest approach. You can measure it using the parallax technique. Now, why are we doing this other than to have an example of a parallax calculation? Well, we want to know how big the astronomical unit is in something that we're familiar with. And kilometers, we all know what a kilometer is. So, let's uh, go to the next level here and let's solve for 1 AU. Now, closest approach, we already said at closest approach, Venus is approximately 0.3 astronomical units from Earth. So let's write that here, 0.3 AU is approximately 4.5 times 10 to the 7 kilometers. So if we want to know how many kilometers are in one astronomical unit, we'll divide both sides by 0.3. Over here we get 1 AU is equal to, do the math, and it's 1.5 times 10 to the 8 kilometers. This is pretty big. I mean, that's a huge number of kilometers, 1.5 times 10 to the 8. It doesn't really matter if it's big or small. The point is we need to know what it is. So we know the true distances to everything and the real uh, scale and size of the solar system. Now that we know how far Earth is from the Sun, since we know all the other planets, their distances from the Sun in AU, we now know them in something physically meaningful, like a kilometer. That all make sense? Is that good? Okay, that's one way to do it. The other way I'll mention briefly, and you'll work an example of this in a later homework, so it's good to get the example now. It's a little bit easier to do mathematically, but I want to show you how it's been done for centuries. Then you enter the 20th century and you have technique number two, which is radar ranging. After World War II, this was possible. And basically, when Venus gets to closest approach, again, you know it's about 0.3 AU away, Rounding off, we send a pulse of radio waves. Radio waves are just another form of light. They travel at the speed of light. Bounces off Venus and comes back. Very similar to the first homework problem you had, where we sent a message to the moon. It came back immediately. So we use the same equation. Distance is speed times time. And the distance that we're traveling is two Venus and back, so that's 0 0.6 astronomical units. Again, I'm rounding off. The speed of light in kilometers per second is what? To the fifth, that's right, kilometers per second. And then all you have to do to measure what one astronomical unit is, is weight. So they send the pulse out. If the solar system is big, now they kind of knew what the answer was. From the parallax measurements, we know how big an astronomical unit is. But if we had no idea, we'd send this pulse of radio waves out, and if, you, if the solar system's huge, you might have to wait hours for it to come back. If it's really small, you might have to wait seconds for it to come back. It is what it is. It takes about 300 seconds for it to come back, rounding off. It's about five minutes. So that shows you how far away it is. Communication round trip time scale of Venus, about five minutes. The seconds cancel, so we have 0 0.6 AU is equal to a certain number of kilometers. Let's see, that would be 9 times 10 to the 7 kilometers. Divide both sides by 0 0.6. You get 1 AU is equal to, again, of course you come up with the same result, 1.5 times 10 to the 8 kilometers. 
So those are the two primary ways we know how big an astronomical unit is and consequently how big the solar system is. Questions about that? 